Assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> Today we'll be discussing the third lecture in the series of uh, radioactivity. So in first two lectures, uh, we had discussed detectors for radioactive emissions, nature of radioactive emissions, and the properties of radioactive emissions. And then we had discussed the equations of the radioactive emissions, what will be the change in the nuclei. And in second lecture, we had discussed uh, half-life of radioactive elements. Today, we'll be discussing fission and fusion, how uh, that radioactivity can be used for production of uh, energy, like conversion into energy. So at first, we are going to discuss fission. Fission is basically splitting of a nucleus into small, smaller nuclei. So the most famous is uranium. And uh, basically uranium exists naturally in two isotopes, that is U-235 and U-238. U-235 is mostly used in this reaction. And uh, you can see here, a neutron will be bombarded to a U-235 nucleus, and it will be converted to a U-236 nucleus, which will be highly unstable. And it will emit some radioactive emissions and it will, uh, it will split into parts. And those parts will be krypton and barium uh, with uh, atomic number 36 krypton and atomic number 56 barium and there will be three neutrons released. Now you can see one neutron was required to start the reaction, but now we have three neutrons released. So these two neutrons will further activate three more nuclei, and those three nuclei will further activate nine more nuclei and so on. So this is known as a chain reaction. And uh, main problem is to control this reaction, you know, it releases huge amount of energy. So uh, in nuclear reactors that is being used. Now you can see here that one nucleus is being converted to uh, barium and krypton and three neutrons and it's further activating three more nuclear nuclei to 235 and so on. So it is stopped by controlling these neutrons. This chain reaction can be controlled by controlling these neutrons and absorbing these neutrons. So we can also write it in the form of an equation. You can see here U-235 plus a neutron and that is converted to barium and krypton and three neutrons plus release of energy. So what does that energy mean? So that is where comes the role of uh, Einstein, who said that energy can be converted to mass and mass can be converted to energy. So what we have discussed earlier in work energy power chapter, that energy can be converted from one form to another and it can never be destroyed. It can never be created. So that is law of conservation of energy. So what we are looking at here, that energy can be converted to mass and vice versa. So basically, if I tell you, now you'll be asking, you'll be wondering that when we burn something, for example, we burn a paper. So why is in a huge amount of energy released in that case? Because when you're looking at this equation, it's given energy is equals to mc squared. Now c is a larger constant. So that is three into 10 to eight meters per second. That is the speed of light in vacuum. So if you multiply it with mass, so very minute mass will be converted into huge energy. But we do not see that in combustion reactions. When we burn some paper or some wood piece, so that amount, huge amount of energy is not released because in that case, uh, balance electrons, like they are making some new bonds and 
what we talk about in mass energy relation that is in nuclear reactions. What we saw in fission reaction that a nucleus is breaking up, a heavier nucleus. Now we have discussed that in very detail in last lecture that why is a nucleus unstable and why does it want to become stable? So we have discussed that in detail, but here we'll see that uranium nucleus is being converted to barium and krypton. And then there is some difference in mass between the reactant and the product side. And that difference in mass is appearing as energy. So we can have some questions related to this also, some numericals that uh, differences mass is given uh, from the reactant and the product side. So that can be converted to energy. So moving on, now, if we talk about the some brief history of this fission reaction. So you can see here 1938, it was uh, discovered and then it was being worked upon by different nations. Now, uh, keep in view, this is the time of Second World War, which ended with uh, a nuclear attack. And uh, you can see here in 1942, a controlled and sustained fission reaction was suggested. And uh, <clears throat> almost at the end of Second World War, uh, US was able to uh, make a nuclear bomb and to use it. So, I hope you know some of its history. We can but we will discuss that how we use it in our reactor. So that's a simple diagram, what you see here. At first, I'll tell you the components. This is a nuclear reactor. And inside it, what do we have? We have First of all, we have a lead container around, which will not allow any radiations to escape this room. And then we have a chamber, a pressure vessel, which can contain this uh, reaction, which can contain that heat. Then we have some boron rods, which can be inserted inside for what? Uh, uranium fuel here. So those boron rods are inserted inside when neutrons are to be absorbed. So uranium fuel is already there and we have some gas uh, in that environment. So what happens when the reaction starts and we have release of energy, so that heats up, so it escapes from the top and it goes to this heat exchanger where we have another piping coming here, carrying water. So what will happen when that hot gas is here, is here it is heating the water inside and it um, escapes in the form of steam to, to a turbine simply. And that gas which has released energy, now it can be circulated back to the pressure vessel. So circulation of gas is here, hot air releases from the top and it comes back from the top bottom. And second is this piping from water is coming. Cold water comes from the bottom, hot water or the steam goes, leaves from the top and it goes to the turbine. And you know the rest, that turbine will be rotated. It will be from, uh, it will be fed in the form of an useful input to the generator. And that generator will produce electricity which will be used further. So if we uh, write it in the form of a block diagram of a nuclear power plant. So we have a nuclear reactor here. And after that, we have a boiler and which is converting water to steam. That steam is being fed to the turbine. That turbine is providing a useful input to a generator. That generator is producing electricity and the transformer is stepping it up and it is going to the transmission lines and then so on. 
there will be a further transform of it will be stepping it down and it will be distributed. So this, this thing, first thing is a bit different. Otherwise, the rest four components is almost same in all the nuclear power plants, specifically thermal power plants, where we have uh, been burning coal, gas, um, fossil fuels, any of them. So we have the nuclear reactor here. And you're, if you're being asked about a thermal power plant using a uh, fuel, so you will simply be uh, suggesting here a combustion chamber here. So that will be uh, feeding the boiler at the time. Okay, so that was the block diagram of a nuclear power plant, which we are uh, uh, constantly using. And uh, for your information, nowadays in Pakistan, uh, we have uh, two new nuclear power plants coming up in Kanab, near Karachi, which are 1100 megawatts each. That's a huge amount of energy, which will be fed to our system. Okay, then next we'll be discussing fusion. Fusion is actually, uh, in fusion, we were breaking up a heavier nucleus to, to smaller nuclei, but in fusion, we will be fusing to smaller nuclei to form a larger nuclei. And again, the difference in bad, uh, mass between the reactant and the product side will be appeared as the energy. So for example, we are combining the deuterium and a tritium uh, nuclei to make a helium nucleus and there is release of energy. So that reaction also takes place in stars. Now, in our world, that is being worked upon because this reaction will be releasing huge um, amount of energy if uh, it is being used uh, peacefully for uh, peaceful purposes but that must be controlled. So fusion reactors are being worked upon for a very long time. And main problem is to contain, contain this energy. So uh, experiments have been performed where these were not controlled like hydrogen bombs, but for peaceful purposes, like for electricity generation that is being worked upon on fusion reactors. So we can have an equation here, uh, due to plus tritium is going to make a helium nucleus. There will be a neutron and there will be release of energy. We'll also be discussing star formation. So how it happens in stars. At first, I would like you to uh, watch a, a documentary of Nachi that is uh, interesting. Then I'll be summing up the points and we'll be discussing points. So, if we sum up the points, so how stars are formed, at first it starts from the cloud of gas and dust, which comes together, and when we have a bigger uh, mass there, uh, what happens that due to that increased mass, there is a gravity, so that gravity pulls all the dust and gas together, and it tends to condense it but then pressure of the gas wants to, uh, like it wants to leave, but there is a balance achieved and, uh, and you can say during uh, all that time, there is friction between particles. So when there is a lot of friction between particles, so what happens, temperature increases and increases and with um, an increase in temperature, the particles of hydrogen can fuse together. So when particles of hydrogen and nuclei of hydrogen fuse together, then that uh, fusion reaction starts. And, uh, but that happens after the temperature has crossed a million degrees Celsius. So <clears throat> I'm also sharing the link of this documentary. So in next video, we'll be discussing <clears throat> where we are uh, using this radioactivity, applying it in our daily lives, and uh, what are the hazards and safety precautions. So we'll also be discussing that in the next video. So please like and comment and
सब्सक्राइब फॉर द चैनल